April 14th, 1944. A captured Panther tank sits in a British workshop, its engine silent, its massive tracks still. On the workbench, Dr. Harold Thompson examines the transmission, a complex assembly of gears designed to handle hundreds of horsepower. But something is wrong. One gear is fractured, jagged, and shattered in a way no engineer would expect. Not worn, not cracked, not fatigued. It failed suddenly, catastrophically. Thompson's eyes widen. This isn't a one-off. Every Panther transmission they've analyzed shows the same deadly flaw. And the implications? They could change the way the Allies fought the German tanks forever. On paper, the Panther is a masterpiece of German engineering, a 75mm high-velocity gun capable of destroying enemy armor at over 2 kilometers, sloped armor designed to deflect shells, and a powerful 700-horsepower Maybach engine meant to drive it across Europe's battlefields with speed and agility. But in practice, the Panther was a mechanical gamble. Intelligence reports from captured Panthers reveal a disturbing statistic. Nearly half of operational Panthers suffered major transmission failures before their first combat mission. Battles weren't won solely by firepower. Sometimes tanks were defeated by their own internal machinery. Thompson knows that understanding why these transmissions fail could give the Allies a critical advantage. The fractured gear is enormous, 7 inches in diameter, 2.5 inches thick, designed to transmit incredible torque from engine to drive sprockets. Thompson begins a meticulous examination. He measures the hardness using a Rockwell tester, pressing a diamond cone into the steel surface. The reading is 63 HRC, far above the specification of 58 to 60 HRC for Panther transmission gears. A gear too hard is a brittle gear. It resists wear, yes, but it fails catastrophically under stress. Every sharp maneuver, every sudden halt, every battlefield shock load could snap it instantly. Thompson cuts the gear in half, tests the interior, finds it softer, 52 HRC, confirming case hardening. Case hardening is normal in gears, a hard surface to resist wear, a softer core to absorb shocks. But here, the case is far too deep, 4.5 millimeters instead of the ideal 2-3 millimeters. This is a design that punishes its operators silently. He polishes samples, etches them with nitric acid, and examines them under a metallurgical microscope at 500x. The microstructure reveals a near pure layer of martensite. Extremely hard, but untempered. A ticking time bomb ready to fracture under stress. Thompson examines six more Panther transmissions, each showing the same fatal flaw, excessive surface hardness, deep case depth, and untempered martensite. This is no isolated manufacturing error. The flaw is systemic, present across factories, months, and production batches. The German approach to Panther production prioritized speed over reliability. Factories were under constant pressure to meet quotas, skilled workers were scarce, and furnaces ran nonstop. The heat treatment process, normally precise and time-consuming, was abbreviated. Carburization, quenching, tempering, every step rushed or skipped. The result, gears that looked flawless but were inherently flawed, hiding a disaster waiting to occur. Thompson compiles his report and delivers it to Major General Percy Hobart, the innovative commander of Britain's armored divisions. The findings are stark. Panther transmissions are mechanically vulnerable, prone to sudden catastrophic failure under normal combat stresses. Sharp turns, abrupt acceleration, reversing under fire. Hobart understands immediately. He circulates the report to tank commanders with a simple recommendation. Force the Panthers to maneuver aggressively. Flank them, make them turn sharply, make them stop and start. A panther that breaks down is a panther removed from the battlefield, without a single shell fired by allied guns. When this tactic is tried in Italy later that year, tank crews report panthers suddenly immobilizing mid-battle. Not destroyed, not burning. Simply dead on the field. Crews abandon their tanks, mechanical failure replacing combat as the decisive factor. The industrial flaw is not just technical, it's human. Skilled German workers are overworked, replaced by forced laborers with minimal training following simplified procedures to meet quotas. Some workers, aware of the danger, make minor errors deliberately or through fatigue. The gears leave the factory hard but brittle, a hidden hazard lying dormant, waiting for the stress of the battlefield to activate. Thompson reflects on the ethical implications. The Panther was a deadly weapon, but its reliability was compromised not by lack of knowledge, but by a system that prioritized quantity over quality. Thousands of German soldiers' lives were inadvertently placed at risk by the mechanical failures of their own equipment. Thompson's analysis didn't end with the war. Post-war, British engineers studied his reports, applying lessons to modern tank design. Heat treatment precision, tempering verification, and metallurgical inspections became standard practice. The mistakes of the Panther transmissions directly influenced transmission reliability for decades to come. Even today, Panther transmissions preserved in museums require constant attention. Original gears, heat treated incorrectly, remain brittle, a reminder that mechanical failure can define history as much as strategy or courage. The Panther tank, a symbol of German engineering excellence, was simultaneously a lesson in hubris.
one wrong step in metallurgy, one rushed heat treatment cycle, and an invincible weapon becomes fragile. Dr. Thompson's work ensured the Allies understood these weaknesses, shaping tactics and saving lives. It proves that knowledge, observation, and engineering insight can be as lethal as firepower on the battlefield. If you want more stories like this and where engineering, metallurgy and battlefield tactics collide, subscribe to this channel.